A very warm welcome to you out there. I'm glad to have you join us. It is another Democracy Day, and another year just gone by in the life of the Buhari presidency. In total, six years have now been spent, two more to go. How far so far in the implementation of the next level agenda of the governing APC? This is the focus of this special edition of NTA Exclusive. My name is Adam Musambu, and my guest is none other than the president, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari. Your Excellency, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Let's begin this way. From what you are seeing and hearing, and from what you have been able to accomplish so far since coming to power, how will you describe Nigeria today? Well, I want Nigerians to be fair to this administration. They should reflect seriously at the time we came in, especially relative to Northeast and South-South, where we are now. It's in time, relatability. Resources, how much were we producing over the previous administration before we came? was producing 2.1 million barrels a day, average, at the price cost of 100 American dollars per, per barrel. When we came, somehow the militants in the South South were unleashed on this administration, and production went down to half a million barrels a day. Again, the market, uh, the, the oil market collapsed. So I would like Nigerians to reflect on those in terms of resources and time. And I believe we haven't done very badly. Just recently, Your Excellency, you read a riot act warning those killing security personnel and burning critical national assets that they will be treated in a language they understand. That's a coded statement. What do you really mean, Your Excellency? Well, what I mean, how can you go to police station Kill the police if they are there, loot the armory, and burn the place. What do you want to achieve? Go and open prison and allow criminals that have been tried through the legal system and let them lose on the society. And then how can government sit aside and allow this confusion to be perpetrated? All they need is confusion, and no government can allow confusion. Look at the ANSAS incident in Lagos. Um, the previous governor of Lagos State bought 200 buses to complement the transportation in Lagos. And he built a complex uh, involving uh, railways. But they went and burnt them. The present governor made an album and came to see me. I said, thank you very much. I took the album, put it in my archives, and I told him to tell the Lagosians to walk because we don't have the money. After uh, an administration bought over 200 buses, some people to come and burn it, so I let them walk. So do you mean fire for fire? More than that, we will arrest them. What I hope to arrest them, try them, give them very bad publicity, and then jail them so that people will know that if they behave, they will not get away with it. So in response to that, some Nigerians accuse you of playing what they call double standards, that insurgents, bandits, and kidnappers were never threatened in such a manner. How will you react to that? They are being unfair. They should go and ask the governors of... Uh, Sokoto, Zampara, Katsina, and found out how we have been deploying the police and the military to deal with the bandits. We are not sparing anybody. But Nigeria is vast, and there are a lot of forests. So it is a known fact that you inherited these challenges of security from previous administrations. You have done so much towards finding lasting solutions. What have been your frustrations? We are doing a lot. The problem is if you order helicopters, you order a fighter aircraft, 
you owe a tank. It takes time. We got uh, our vehicles from Jordan, from China, and these things, you have to take them to our institutions where they will be uh, doing, train the trainer. You get people, train them Nigerians, stock spare parts before you send them to operational area. These things take time, especially when you don't have much foreign exchange. But on a quiet way, if you can talk to some of your colleagues in the Air Force or in the Army, tell them where were they or where were we in 2015? Where, were, where are we now? In terms of equipment, training, it's amazing. But no, we will never do well with those who want to oppose us. The Nigerian elite ought to give more time to what the effort the government is doing to physically secure the country, improve the economy, and stop corruption. And Nigerian elite know that uh, we campaigned both in 2015 and 2019 on security, because it's just common sense. You have to secure a country or an establishment to manage it properly. So number one thing is security. Number two, economy. Employment, a lot of youth that are unemployed. And then fighting corruption, making sure that the regulations we have on the ground are followed to the letter. No shortcuts. Recently, Your Excellency, arrests have been made in respect of those allegedly financing terrorism. What will you say is their motive, and how do you intend to deal with the situation? Their motive is that uh, uh, they are made irrelevant, and they want to use their resources, the resources they accumulated over the years, to prove that they are still around, and uh, the administration will deal with them anybody a court will be dealt with. Your Excellency, is there any hope that we will see a Nigeria that is free of security concerns before you leave office? Well, that is my hope. That's what I'm working to. As I said, number one thing is security. If you don't secure the country, firstly, people will not invest. That was why those who organize the answers uh, I send uh, all the ministers back to their constituencies. Constitutionally, the ministers represent their states. I say they should go to their states. Let them speak to the governors. Let them speak to the um, political leaders. Let them speak to the traditional uh, leaders. And very importantly, let them speak to the youth. That the federal government has no more vacancy. Virtually every department is filled. The same thing in the states, the same thing in local governments. So you can have a good degree, degree from a good university, and you will never get a job. Because if you promote insecurity by burning factories, by burning institutions, uh, nobody will come and invest. So it's in their own interest to make sure that Nigeria is secure. When the country is secure, it's potentially rich. God has endowed Nigeria with resources. People will come and invest. But there must be security. There must be stability. Countries that have the resources to invest must make sure that they can recover their investment. The fight against corruption is one of the cardinal pillars of your administration. How will you describe the journey so far, Your Excellency? Well, under this system is difficult. I would like to repeat what I used to say. When I was, I think, a bit younger and in uniform when I came, I arrested the uh, president, vice president, governors, ministers, commissioners, and put them under restriction or detention and told them that they are guilty until they can prove themselves innocent. 
Now, this is offers a democratic system, as people would like to believe. And we put investigation panels virtually based on the present geopolitical zones for those who held positions. And because it was a law for people to declare their assets before when they become governors or ministers or commissioners or head of uh, security agents, they were investigated. Those that cannot explain the extra resources they have in terms of assets and in the banks, they, are, they, are, they were asked to surrender it. It was taken from them. But eventually, I myself was arrested, detained, and they were given back their loot. So this is Nigeria. You have once said that only God knows how much has been stolen from this country. But most worrisome, as you have also said, is that the, those with illegally acquired funds use them to fight your administration and destabilize the country. What have been the stumbling blocks in your efforts at making them pay for their sins? Nigerians, I think, are very forgetful. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, 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 the majority of Nigerians, what I believe, think that this country, uh, this administration, under the circumstances, are doing their best. But, it's a capital but, people who was appropriated funds, a lot of them were elected members, either at state level or at federal level. And their base still values them. You can accuse them or even try to prove that uh, when they were elected uh, members of the House of Reps and they were given ministries and so on, they had only one house and maybe a wife. But now they had several houses in Abuja, maybe in Lagos and maybe two more wives. So really, if you try to work out their legitimate salary vis-a-vis -vis their expenditures, they will be embarrassed. That's what I mean. You have had cause to make a strong case for the establishment of specialized courts to fight corruption in this country. Do you believe that is still necessary? Yes. To save time, and to convince Nigerians we are serious. Because if you follow the legal system we inherited from our colonial masters, cases take five, ten years, and people forget. But if you have sufficient courts, you develop terms of reference for them, you bring charges, immediately people are put before that court, they will come and uh, defend themselves. But if you go through the system, especially if they still have some savings somewhere, they can get first class sons, lawyers, to come and defend them. And uh, the case will drag on until maybe either the judge dies or the committee got tired and they go back to their normal life. That's why I say sufficient courts are very important, especially in the cases of corruption, so that uh, uh, the Riot Act will be properly read uh, to the public, that uh, anybody who finds himself in a place of responsibility and misbehave, he will account for it. We shouldn't wait until uh, people die and go before Almighty God. Development of the railways is also a cardinal objective of your administration. You have done so much. Why do you focus on railways? I used to sit and watch even the network news. Um, two years ago also, if you, if you watch and see the number of people dying, 
between Lagos and Ibadan alone because of bad roads, because there are no railways. You will be sorry for this country. That was why I made up my mind that one of the priorities is to make sure that the roads and the rails are rehabilitated. And tell me, which country develops without infrastructure? Roads, rail, and power. We have to get this correct. And those who are going about this country you know that this administration has tried in terms of rehabilitating roads, in terms of rehabilitating the railway, in terms of increasing power. Relative to the resources and the time, we haven't done very late for those who want to be, who want to criticize us, criticize us objectively. So are we likely to see major cities of the country connected by rail? Yes, we are planning that. We are planning that. And uh, we are grateful to China Republic. They have agreed to help us, and they are helping us. And we are, we are doing our best. And now we will go and ask people the two struggle between Iba, Lagos, and Ibadan, how much ease this development has brought to them. To travel between Lagos and Ibadi used to be hell. On the economy, Your Excellency, Nigeria recently exited its second recession due to the pragmatic implementation of your administration's economic policies and programs. Is it yet Uhuru? Are you satisfied with the performance of the economy so far? No, I am not. That's why I'm trying even harder uh, to make people become accountable and to make sure uh, we persuade foreign countries to allow their uh, multinationals to develop more confidence in Nigeria and come and invest. When they develop more confidence in Nigeria, they will come and invest. That will give us employment. That will provide us with goods and services. And the chain, right from the farms, Upwards, you know, will be great, and that means a lot of employment. And this is our problem large population, young population, unemployed population. You promised to diversify the economy. How will you describe your efforts so far? Well, you could recall, and if you don't, the business people and the smugglers will recall. We close the borders with Benin Republic and with Niger. With Niger, we have 1,500 kilometers border with them from Lake Chad to Benin Republic. And there are business people that order things from Niger, but for Nigeria market. We closed the borders, we stopped importation of food. We know if you have to come through the port, you have a problem. One. We want the central bank that you shouldn't give a, a, a styling to anybody who is importing food. Let us eat what we produce. We make sure that you can only come through the port. Through the port, you pay um, customs. Before you go, you go and buy other sterling dollar or whatever at the market because central bank will let you give you money to go and import food. And when they come back, they cannot compete with local producers. So that encourages a lot of people to go back to the land. There are people who left air conditioned office and went back to the farm. And that was positive for Nigeria. Now our own rice is fresh and is available and is competitive in the market. I think this is one of our major successes. You are also doing so much in fertilizer production. Why fertilizer? Yes, because um, we want productivity. 
and productivity um, means that uh, people can get food, basically. And we have to empower the farmers. Fertilizer used to be very scarce, used to be very expensive. We made sure it's available in all local governments. And we try to sell it at subsidized prices so that ordinary farmers can afford fertilizer. And I'm telling you, we made a lot of progress. If we haven't taken that initiative, we would have been in trouble. Why? Because, as I said, the petroleum industry has almost collapsed. We are not earning as much as we used to. And if we don't have the money to buy it, and we couldn't farm it, if you get uh, uh, 50 million people hungry, you will be in trouble. So we made sure that we make it available. And uh, uh, the response was uh, very, very good, as, as you know. Let's talk politics now. Unlike other political leaders, you came out so early to announce that you are not going to stay a day longer after the, the termination of your administration. Why did you come out so early to announce that? Well, I, I hate fraud in any form. If I haven't made this statement and made it absolutely clear that I, I have sworn to uphold the Constitution, and the Constitution said you can't do more than two terms, I have sworn, I, have, I had the first term, and before the first term, I went to every local government in this country, all the 774 local governments. The second term, I went to every state, 2019. And uh, I made a remarkable observation. The amount of people that came to see me in every state across the country were more than anybody can buy or force. So I am very pleased that Nigerians deliberately made an attempt to understand me and that uh, I will stand by my oath of office, that I will serve this country honestly and diligently. In the last seven months, Your Excellency, two PDP governors have defected to your party, the governing APC. Does that give you hope that the governing APC will return power in 2023? Yes, we are preparing APC to remain in power for as long as possible. In the sense that uh, we said registration of members from bottom to top, from falling unit to ward, to local government, to state, to here in Abuja, we want to have a reliable number of people registered in APC in every state of the country. And we are going to give this a lot of publicity because the success of the administration will depend on the survival of APC after we left. It's no use that we leave and then we leave, uh, you know, with the party. The party should continue. You still have two years to go in the execution of your mandate. Describe for us the kind of Nigeria you'd like to hand over to your successor. I would like to hand over a secure, prosperous, confident Nigeria to whoever succeeds me. This is very important because um, there are people, if not in Nigeria, outside, that are watching the development of developing countries, the systems we are going through. Look at what we went through from January 15th, 1966 uh, to now. Coups, counter coups, civil war, coup, counter coup. Uh, then elections uh, and uh, 
we, we now go from elected government to elected government. Instead of elected government, coup, counter coup, elected government, coup, ka. So we are setting it down uh, with a multi-party democratic system. And uh, if that is honestly uh, pursued and supervised by current administrations, it's the best thing. Allow people to choose which individuals and which party to run their affairs. It's very respectful to ordinary people. But if you make it a big man's party, only the rich and so on, then the security cannot be guaranteed. In the last six years, Your Excellency, your administration has done so much to keep Nigeria united and provide the basic necessities of life. Looking back, sir, what will you say you are most happy about? What gives you joy? I think uh, no matter how reluctantly, majority of Nigerians are understanding me and appreciating the efforts we are making. Because right from the word go, as I told you much earlier, we identify our problem. One, security. Two, economy, employment of people. And side, try to fight corruption. People getting something for nothing. You have to make sure that people earn their living and they will defend it. Finally, sir, you have recently taken the second dose of your COVID-19 vaccine. How do you feel? Any side effect, Your Excellency? Well, there are no side effect. I'm very pleased that uh, um, I have got the second uh, injection. But what I'm worried is why this uh, Takungumi, I call it. <laughs> Mr. President, I would like to sincerely thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much indeed for leaving me alone. Okay. <laughs> 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 Join us next time on yet another edition of NTA Exclusive. My name is Adam Musambo saying bye for now.